Welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. It was a, a brilliant weekend of football in the All Ireland Senior Football Ladies Football Championship. As we've seen, Mead win the All Ireland. We've seen Leash obviously win the Intermediate All Ireland Senior Football Championship, and Antrim and Fermanagh playing out a draw as well. I'm joined here by Patrick Sharkey from GA Zone Media and Mayo-based journalist Chloe Lynch to review uh, all the games from the from the weekend's football action. Just a reminder, we're brought to you by Declan Kirby, GA star, the best children's GA book out there in the market at the minute. You can find it on Amazon, Easton's, all good bookshops, so make sure to check that out when you get a chance. Uh, Patrick, we'll come to you first. How is uh, things with yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Yourself there, as you know, it was a, it was a great weekend um, of football, obviously, yesterday of the three ladies final and then the women's Euros final was also a great advertisement for women's sport and Obviously, yeah, look, my quality weekends are always good, and hopefully, you know, but short splits is good, but I'm doing good myself, so yeah. And Chloe, how's things with yourself? Did you enjoy all the uh, the weekend's action? Oh, good now. Um, You know, uh, yes, uh, past the weekend capped off a great year of uh, ladies' football, and, you know, another year where we get to see uh, ladies' football uh, finally getting recognition it deserves, so happy out. 100%. Yeah, well, I suppose we'll start off with the uh, with the Mead and Kerry game. It obviously finished Mead 3-10, Kerry 1-7. I suppose, Patrick, first of all, like it was a, a brilliant start, obviously, first of all, by Kerry, you know, scoring a, a goal and two points in the opening, the opening five or six minutes. But Mead, once again, come roaring back and, and show what a great team that they are. I mean, it took them just seven minutes to to turn it around and be in front. And, and from there, they never even lost the lead. True champions, that's what they are. You know, it's what it's what true champions do. Like me, me, they were they were ruthless yesterday. They absolutely put Kerry to the sword. Like um like I was really thinking, you know, it was gonna be like me only narrowly beat them in the division two final back in twenty twenty one. But ever since then, me just they, they've taken their game to a whole new level and um yesterday it was just on our you know, like Kerry kept Emma Duggan quiet, but me showed, you know, there's over fourteen other capable woman there as well so um no brilliant brilliant um performance by a very strong um leaf team and uh, look great achievement for amy murray you know becky wall always delivering stacy grimes kitty new really good in the back you know monica mcgurk won most of her kickouts too like so a great on all the rest but looks carry some great performance you know paris mccarthy at 18 was probably carrie's best performer yesterday and um, Louise Nemir to her crew, you know, she always delivers her carry no matter what the scoreline is. But look, it was um, definitely a great performance um, yesterday. And um, yeah, good, good advertisement for uh, ladies football. And um, yeah, so. Yeah, and I suppose, Chloe, what were your thoughts on the on the game itself? I mean, Mead, I suppose, showed a, a tremendous amount of character as well to, to turn it around and obviously getting the two late goals in the, in the second half as well. I suppose just the to finish carry off in the end well big time you know i thought the first 10 minutes maybe carry had it in the bag you know when louise got her goal like i um you know the me took ages to to kind of settle in and um you know carry taking away nothing from carry they have been an absolutely outstanding panel throughout the year like um whatever was said second half like they just immediately woke up and remembered they were the all Ireland champion between the two and um, you know i it was amazing just to see when those goals the two uh, um late goals went in just to kind of seal the gap um you know it was unlucky for Kerry um they just didn't come fighting out in the second half and you know that's what cost them you know we uh second half we got to see why Mead are the are the all Ireland champions and you know it was a well deserving well deserving win in the end and but you know looking forward to next year Kerry have a lot of momentum going in because you know if you had to ask at the start of the season you wouldn't have thought Kerry would have made it to this final and you know, me just showed why they are the All Ireland champions. You know, they had a rocky first half, like you know, going back and forth, and like, um, kept keeping level on the same uh, number of occasions. But you know, whatever was said in the second half just immediately woke them up, because um, you know, they didn't. They were just kind of slow and kind of sloppy in the first 
first half. You know, when Louise Nemour, her kids' goal went in, I initially thought, like, maybe Kerry, Kerry have it in the bag. But, you know, as I said, me just proved why they are the reigning all Ireland champions. Yeah, because they, they did look a little bit shell-shocked in some ways, Patrick Mead in the opening sort of... 10 minutes like it was a it was a strange one really because for until they got that opening score i don't even think they got into kerry's half at all like i mean kerry just had them completely pinned in they were turning them over from kickouts uh as chloe says there louise in america obviously gets that that goal brilliant goal on her on her left boot into the into the top right corner and you know like we've seen this from from times with previous all Ireland champions or previous great teams where maybe they start a little bit slow they struggle to recover but as we've seen with this Mead side, I mean they were they were tremendous in uh, in recovering and, and turning around and and winning quite comfortable in the end. Yeah, me they are um, look, is like we've seen it so many times in you know, so many great teams down through the years. Like, how many teams like have you seen like you know the double men? Like, these footballers are a good example. You know, in the past they would have started the first ten minutes like that. There, you know, let the team. I think it's near like. It's a bit like the whole Muhammad Ali tactics, you know, kind of um, walk like a butterfly, sting like a bee kind of thing, you know. I think, you know, Kerry just threw the kitchen sink at Meath and everything, you know, and eventually they were wiped out, you know, and Meath had the right bench and stuff, Regetta Lynch and whatnot, and they had a good use of everything. So that's just that there. And they had the exact same plans as they did last year. They haven't had anyone leaving the team in retirements or anything, which is good to see. So, yeah, um, that was obviously... A good enough um aspect there so great great resilience um from me and um you can't even complain about carries wise they just barely left them there like and um i think you know the job katie new done on paris mccarthy has to be praised as well and um there's a few other ones as well and um emma duggan like you know she only got one score but you know she was either, you know, in the first half, she was really occupying the 40, but she done a lot more running in the second half, which I think I attribute to that there. I think that was the key to me, you know, really unlocking Kerry. Yeah, and I, and I suppose, Chloe, like every time Vicky Wall got the ball as well, like, I mean, you could hear even from from watching on the TV, like the sort of the crowd were cheering every time she, she gets the ball, like, and she obviously scored three points. She was immense, like, with, with those forward runs. Like, obviously, Mead won't have her next year because she's gone away to the to the AFL. But at the same time, I mean, she's a, a tremendous athlete and she's going to be a big miss for, for Mead next year. Um, big time. Like, I know, you know, even though they have loads of girls going off to Austra Australia, like um, I've said it before, you know, we you have to, now's the time for the likes of the up and coming girls to see, to seek their opportunity. Like, you know, I, I, like uh, Vicky Wall, like the name says it all like to be honest you know absolutely outstanding um you know she absolutely a, a tremendous final but um you know even though the, like the likes of vicky will be a massive loss to me like um you, now you, they don't they're not a panel that just depend on the one player like you know we saw them last year just get the weight over to eventually get the brenda martin cup but um you know like going in like hopefully next year hoping for a third in a row like you know they have an absolutely tremendous panel like um even without the girls going off to australia and i think you know it's the time for the younger players just to see like start put a management on notice like you play for the all Ireland champions like play like a champion like even though they are going to miss them big time like like as i said it's just time now for the other girls to step up to the plate and just keep this momentum going because you know going into next year like they're all they have a massive target on their back even with the losses that they will have but um you know it's like unbelievable final for them for the likes of vicky and like they're just tremendous champions and deserving champions on the day yeah and, and i suppose patrick like i mean when you look back at a lot of all ireland ladies football champions like there does seem to be an awful habit of teams going on to dominate i mean you obviously had the double dubs who won four in a row you'd cork who won nine in a row like if you go back and actually look at sort of the role of honor you have so many teams who've actually gone on to win it the following year. Like it's such a common trend, even going back to you know when Waterford won some, when Monaghan were successful, Mayo won back to back 
all Ireland ladies football champions not too long ago as well. So Mead have now won back to back, and I mean, not many people could see their era of of domination coming. You know, considering they were into you know intermediate uh, playing at intermediate level just a couple of seasons ago, but they've won back to back now. Like, what do you think could Mead be? You know, the the team to stop now over the next couple of seasons. I mean, obviously they will because they won the All Ireland, but. What do you reckon? Could there be three, four, possibly even more coming uh, further down the ranks now for Mead? Um, I, I would think I would think um, Meath are definitely they're the best team in the country. No doubt, the, the two in a row champions always would be. But I, look, the, no, um, I, I don't think it's going to be as dominant. I think they might do three in a row, but I doubt maybe a four in a row could be going like just look at it this way. Sure, um, Dublin beat them in the leading championship, so Dublin could easily come back. Um, they only beat Galway by a point in the quarterfinal. They beat ourselves, Donegal, by two points in the f- semifinal group arc. So there's four teams uh, capable of doing it as well. Like, and um, Mayo have had a few girls going straight. If some of them come back, they're on there too. So th- th- there's there's a few teams capable of pulling up trees in the ladies' championship. So no, I, I do not believe that there's going to be some their dominance there. But look, it's, it's not because me for a bad team. It's just, you know, there's about five or six very high quality teams, and um, looking at Leash yesterday in the intermediate final, I don't think they're gonna be going down anytime soon. And um, yeah, all, all the rest, and yeah, so that's it there. Yeah, I mean, it is it is hard to know. Like, I mean, obviously they do have a couple of players leaving the panel next season, but the thing that has impressed me quite a lot is a lot of the time they keep finding a way to win, even when they're not playing well, which I think shows the the sign of a, of a really, really good side. But I suppose from a Kerry perspective, Chloe, I mean, they can take a, a lot of positives from this year. Like, I mean, they haven't won an all Ireland Ladies Football Championship in 29 years, going back as far as 1993. They, they get to the final... Fair enough, they get beaten quite comprehensively in the end. But as Patrick was saying earlier, like you have Paris McCarthy, who's only 18, you have a lot of young players in there. Like she for O'Shea is a very good footballer as well. So, like, there is a lot of room for, for optimism for the future for, for Kerry. True, like, um, you know, they were absolutely outstanding, you know, to end the tenure wage of Steve and get to the final, like, you know, they'll have a, like loads of those girls will. Be do should be doing great when when it comes to authors you know Louise Nemo Hartig like you know she was just on a whole new level like you know um when even when Mayo uh when Kerry bet Mayo like you know um they were just they put up the fight that they've just like preserved more of their energy and kept it to the just to get to the last final hurdle I know they didn't get what they want but like keeping that momentum going into next year or here like here we finally got to an all and final after what 10 years like you they're going in strong very strong like this year in this year for kind of the intercounty season in general it was kind of a year of like the underdogs to be honest you know like even for mayo like we got to a semi-final first time in 2017 since 2017 i believe and like you know see see like the likes of all even donegal and like all coming up and like Kerry were just like they mightn't have been favorites in this game but like you know they put up some fight you know once the kind of Louise got their goal in the first half you know they obviously got the massive bit of momentum with them and like kind of just maybe nerves got the best best of them in that game you know made had the experience of an all-ireland final but um like as i said going into next year they have so much to build on and like i know they didn't get brendan home but um you have to think you can't take away the massive achievements they had and like just to see the joy on their faces even when they got to the final you know um meat were just on a whole new level and you know vicky wall say were walking was walking past them with no bother um you know they have a lot of momentum going into next year and you know just to keep that mindset and just be more hungry like you know look we didn't get it last year this time we're going for the gold um you know absolutely brilliant team and i just think um they've been doing an absolutely amazing job with management and it'll be interesting next year to see can they keep up this momentum who would be your uh, ladies' footballer of the year, Patrick? If you had to uh, 
if you have to choose one, like, I mean, Mary Kate Lynch obviously had a, a very good season from a Mead perspective. You know, Emma Duggan was very good, Vicky Wall, but, and obviously plenty of Kerry players and other players from other counties. But who would be uh, your ladies' footballer of the year? Uh, I'm going to give it to Paris McCarthy of Kerry. I thought she had a fantastic year, you know, making her championship debut in 2022. You know, he's, she's got a few goals in each game. She really kind of, she put a lot of games fed. I think a lot of her scores and all the rest. And, um, she won't be going anywhere anytime near soon. Like so, like um, her and Emma Duggan would already be like the two best footballers in the country at eighteen and nineteen. So, well, they'd be like at twenty eight and twenty nine. But look, um, it's great to see. So, yeah, I would have to pick her. Like, but um, yeah. What about yourself, Chloe? Who would you be uh, looking at for ladies footballer of the year? Um, for me, I'd have to say Louise Nimur Hertig. Like, you know, just I know she wasn't on the winning side. But like what she did, what she has achieved in that Kerry jersey throughout the year is just uh, unbelievable. Like um, she's a whole like once you have if, even for any player in jail, like you have to see them play for yourself to realize how good they are. You know, you could see, say, even in the final when look, she got a few wides and you know she was raging. You see how much she loves the game. She's like when she got that goal, like absolutely unbelievable. Um, yeah, as I said, I know she didn't get on the winning side, but um. You know, she's because uh, she's inspiring a whole new generation for Kerry ladies footballers, and I just think she's brilliant. Yeah, I think we might be giving a, a bit too much credit to, to Kerry there, so I might have to go with a, a mead lady there, and I, I think I'll go with Nevo Sullivan for uh, for footballer of the year there. GA Statsman says here, my pride and yours, Aaron, is saved up the Royals. Yeah, I never thought that mead would, would come along and save the day and prevent. Um, you know, prevent Kerry winning two All Orleans in in the space of a week, but they they absolutely did. Moving on from that, you had the intermediate final. It was Leash one thirteen, Wexford one eleven, and uh, as Sir Klopp says here, good to see the Leash colours back in uh, in Crow Park. And yeah, I suppose Patrick, it was uh, it was great to see Leash you know fans back in Crow Park. The famous Leash 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 chant was ringing out all over Crow Park. All the fans were were very much getting behind it and. Look, they, they hung on in the end, Wexford. I feel like like that moment at the end where they went for the point, I was surprised they didn't go for a, a goal or try work a goal. But in the end, look, Leash very much got this job done in, in the first half, really. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> Leash... No, like, Leash, I think, left it an incredible amount of them to do. Like, and obviously, they could have easily left it behind them in the last few minutes there because Wexford there. But that, that point at the end for Wexford, I think, you know, killed off the game, you know. Because I think you know they needed that goal desperately, but mm, that second goal, not not having for Wexford is what really made there. But like, look at Moon Ernie, she's um a sensational footballer, obviously as well, and um all the rest there. But you know what? Like it's it's only been there. Like I think you know the way Leash ran it there, and um, I was speaking beside um a journalist from the Leinster Leader, and he was telling me all oh, this this Leash team are very good and all the rest. And the first half it really proved to be that way in all rest so yeah they've really had some um great talent there in all rest and um actually done her the, the fullback as well was um great and whatnot but um i don't think you know i think that might shoot the way they allowed wexford back in the game that's probably a little bit of a worry for next year but i think we are safer out there like but no a great achievement for leash you know we don't get that many trips to crow park but you know maybe next year with a talton cup Joe McDonough Cup, and maybe if the ladies can pull up a shock, maybe, maybe they might have more trips to Crow Park, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I suppose, Chloe, as, as Patrick was saying there, like, Mo Nerny was in incredible form. Like, she scored 1-5. Emma Lawler, I thought, was very impressive with two points. And, like, Leash have got a very, very good side. And as we've seen with teams coming up from intermediate level, and as, and as we've seen with, with ladies football at senior level in general, like, I mean... You know, we've seen a lot of teams, even like Kerry, sort of coming out of nowhere. Not many people would have expected them to, to get to the All Ireland final this year. So, I suppose, like from a from a leash perspective, a lot of optimism now going into the, the senior championship next year. Definitely, like I'm very looking for looking forward to it. Um, to see how they do in senior, um, you know, like um, as Patrick said, like they don't get to Co Park often, and like you know they showed up and they made sure to play, you know, um, like if 
like Wexford had a lot of chances just to even level it up. And, you know, we sh we saw in this match how crucial it is for points and how much they matter. You know, as you said, like Mo Nerny, like absolutely unbelievable. She was just the woman of the day. And I just think may like they have a big, it'll be up going into senior next year. Like obviously they have a lot of onlookers on, but, um, if they keep up that display like they did, you know, God knows where they're where they could end up at. You know, as you said, like we saw like with me intermediate, like the they've gone on to win all our champions. Like, um, you know, it's early days to say, but like if they keep this momentum going, I'd say they will go far in senior next year. Yeah, what would be your thoughts on on that one, Patrick? Like in, in terms of leash, obviously going up to the senior level next year, do you think that they could be competitive or, or what do you think they'd, or how do you think they'd get on? Look, I know obviously, you know, they, they'll, they'll be obviously in, in around the town and leash over the next few days over the bank holiday weekend. I'm sure celebrating. They won't want to, they won't want to think about that now, but at the same time, look, we've seen teams go up and be competitive there. So how do you reckon leash will, will get on there next year? Yeah. Like, um, e even if they get relegated next year, it could maybe benefit them in the wrong way. You know, you maybe look at tip winning the intermediate back in 2017. When I've got relegated in 2018, probably a bit too soon. Then went straight down, then won the intermediate the straight next year. And I've stayed in the senior championship ever since. Like, so I'm not, you know, but they were speaking of Tipperary, they've already beaten Tipperary in the league. So that's one senior team you're probably capable of beating there. Um, it's only the harsh reality was there was two releg teams getting relegated this year, I think there was, and from senior because they're trying to expand the intermediate championship but I, I don't know what the story is next year but i think you know if, if the draw goes right they absolutely can go out and um get get a one there or something there but um i think the focus for leash is to get up one division two and then hopefully stay in division one and then if they get the exposure to division one then they can maybe go on us County because they have won um brendan martin cups before because it's not exactly um just out of their reach like because um they have won it in 2001 i know it's been a bit of a while you know but the and for, the only thing i want to say about the 2001 one is they won the intermediate in the year 2000 so you just never know but i think they have enough to survive but quarterfinals is a bit off the, too far from them. yeah absolutely and and i suppose chloe just a word on on wexford like Obviously, Katrina Murray with that late goal. And I remember watching it. Like, Wexford were creating so many goal chances towards the end of the game. Leash were getting so many late blocks in. But you felt like a goal was coming and you felt like there was a, a, resurgence, that, a resurgence that was coming from Wexford. But I suppose in the end, it was just uh, too little, too late in the end. Yeah, big time. Like, um, they just didn't have them in them. I have it in it. Um, just to kind of fight that bit more, you know, Leash kind of saw, you know, here their their weaknesses and, and just jumped on straight away. Like, you know, they can't, you can't take away the, like the performance. Um, you know, like Murray, Kearney, Breen, like absolutely brilliant. And and you know, they've done it. They've done proud. Like, you know, even though again they didn't get what they wanted. Like going in again with the momentum for next year but um you know as you said like they just they, can't, they didn't fight for it near the end and like um if like maybe if they had that little bit more time and like you know how we get the last bit of push of energy but um you know leash as like we saw leash started from dominant from the beginning and they just kept that going through and like look maybe when they Wexford got that goal like they could have gone either way but um you know, Wexford just, as I said, didn't have any fight in them. And, um, like, we saw how crucial, again, points can be just to, to get over the finish line. But, um, you know, even though, again, they didn't get what they wanted, I think it was a, it was a decent performance, considering they haven't, like, another team that haven't, hasn't had a lot of outings um, to Crow Park. And, um, you know, it'll... Although, like, they are going to be upset with performance, you know, they can take the time out just to study and improve for next year. And, um, you know, we saw Leash, like, you know, Myrna, Mo Nierney, you know, absolutely one of the outstanding performers of, of the day, like, you know, um, but, you know, I'm not taking away anything from this Wexford side, but, um, you know, the, the experience, again, wasn't on their factor. 
And, um, you know, as I said, they have, have the time now just to take time out and study for next year. And um, we all know in GA anything can happen. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they go next year. Yeah, I mean, Patrick, you'd have to imagine Wexford will be uh, one of the favourites anyway for the, for the Intermediate Championship next year. Yeah, um, I probably would think they are going to be one of the favourites for the Intermediate Championship. I hear, sure. Look, the the footballers are here, Donnelly and all the rest. Maybe Mary Rose Kelly at 40, making her debut in 1986. Might call it in, but she might stay on another year. You don't know. There's a few other experienced heads there. But look, Wexford, absolutely, you know, they've a mainly young team, you know, um, about. 18 members of their squad are 24 or under, which is obviously um, not 26 or under, which is obviously a good sign for them. So, yeah, and, you know, sometimes you need that loss there, but, you know, and maybe it might get them better. Like, sure, Meath lost the intermediate back in 2019 against um, Tipperary, so you just don't know there. And, um, yeah, yeah, they would have to be the favourites there, but, you know, I think but Cabin obviously come down from senior as well aren't going to be pushed about and um to like so definitely de- definitely out there like and i think you know liz liz is a good man liz kent will definitely team well set up there and she's just saying you know that she has confident and other than she's staying on next year so i i can't see anything on them so right now you'd have to pick them but yeah, things could change yeah, and I suppose last but not least, then we had the junior final, which finished Antrim 113 from Mana 113. I suppose Patrick will come to you first on this, obviously being a, an Ulster man yourself. Um, look, very, very good game, very entertaining game, very close game. And look, it's interesting. Obviously, this is the, the only one of you know all games so far about men's and women's level at at, um, at inter county level that's actually gone to a replay so interesting enough like this game's going to have its own sort of sort of meaning next weekend like it's going to be there by itself but i suppose first of all like what were your thoughts on the game it was um it was a brilliant game it was uh, it really really had you on the edge there but i thought antrim you know put them away in the first half there but you know that goal for for mana you know maybe look i think the defining moment was obviously the square ball but look, they really, really came out um, for Mana there. You know, um, Cleona McElroy and many others were quite good. You know, Blaine Bogue got, she got a lot of points yesterday as well. So no doubt about that there. And I thought it was, you know, um, a real end-to-end game. You know, and there's a lot of, you know, some of them have ones, you know, that are there 16. Like, they, like so that's obviously good there. Like, but um, I think it's probably going to be in Clonus in two weeks' time. But definitely, definitely a good um advertisement for junior football i do think i do think it's a little bit harsh on them i would rather be done the day you know but penalties can be harsh but they're the lesser of two eagles in my take but still um relaxing and, and there wasn't many wides in the game either and it was good flow and um i think you know it was one of those games where you look at saying you know there no mark you know um maybe it's something that could be implemented in the mains mains game without any mark because it was free flowing but yeah um that was it yeah. Yeah, and I suppose, Chloe, like you're seeing for Mana, obviously rallying late on, like Emer Smith obviously gets herself a, a goal. Aaron Tierney, Emer Smith with another late point as well before Antrim levelled it with the last kick of the game. So, you know, Antrim very much had it, you know, there, there to be won, but for Mana late on with a, a late rally, I suppose, bringing it back and in the end it goes to a replay. Yeah, um, I'd say uh, the two panels, you know, Antrim will be the be more sour that it went to the replay. You know, like we saw how great they started off, and like obviously for for Mana just uh, um produced an outstanding comeback, like you know, uh, one oh five to like four points, I believe, and you know. Like when the Fermanagh say won that penalty, and like it was just you know obviously it just can prove again how how much GA can kind of hurt you and kind of bring you your good days. But um, you know, I think going into this replay, Antrim, Antrim are the favourites again. You know, um, they like we as I said, like they started strong and like it's all kind of to play for. Um, to be honest, I didn't like for Manage it amazing just to get that comeback. Um, you know, Antrim are 
are an absolutely amazing side and you know going into this replay it's all to play for and you know as Patrick said you know it's great great coverage for junior football and like you know it was a game that was had you on and off your seat and like it'll be another great day you know for but it'll be interesting now to see who gets it over the line it's done their homework from the first time and um can convert it to getting getting this win because um it's kind of one it's kind of one again like it could go anywhere but um for me i think if they have their game set right um i'll pick antrim for this replay yeah who would you be backing yourself patrick for for the replay i'm i'm, I'm gonna back for mana you know um the last two years they were in the junior championship they won it you know they obviously won in 2020 um against wicklow and then obviously i was there when they beat out when they were at, well they were actually no, no they, they were actually beaten by life back then like they have you know multiple of those some of those girls already have pure free medals there i think you know for mana they have that experience you know some of them like some of the antrim players starting you know were 16 17 like you know like so it's just um going there i think it's just i know they lost last year but i still think there's more to give um for Fermanagh. i think experience will come out um on top for Fermanagh. you know they obviously have um a few different um good footballers there and um yeah so i'd probably have to go with Fermana to come through in that game but uh look um i'm trying to do a good football as well like you know there's the like made mo holland as well really hold held her own and i think you know, she could be a difference maker but yeah, Billy Flynn says here, huge achievement for me. Very rare for Leinster team in men's and ladies football to win back to back All Orleans. Mead ladies are only the sixth Leinster team to do two in a row in the last ninety years in in men's and ladies. So that's quite the statistic there. Really, to show the the achievement of the uh, of the Mead ladies there. Well, I suppose before we finish up, we'll just touch maybe on some uh, some GA related topics over the the last few days and. I suppose, Chloe, you're obviously a proud Mayo fan yourself, and Kevin McStay looks very, very close to becoming the, the Mayo manager, <laughs> according to, to rumours and everything else. So what's your uh, what's your take on that? Um, it's, you know, it's the... I, as Mayo woman, like Mayo fans, we are checking our phones absolutely 24-7. Um, you know, like, it's obviously, it's a lot to take con of male of all people like you know and we won't talk about that history but um you know i was very confident he has a great kim mcstay like he has a great background team and you know he's winning the popular once i heard he was actually in the mix for the job i went out and bought his book <laughs> and like um you know i think like going strong but rumor is that the uh, board are kind of mad that stuff has been leaking but as you know as we know like any you know ga twitter is a whole topic uh a whole podcast episode in itself um you know if he gets it right if he just gets the tactics right like he could start an amazing new era of mayo football um he wasn't wasn't particularly one of my picks to get the job but um you know he's he's been a great servant um in mayo football and it'll be interesting to see like if you go around mayo now everyone wants an outside man and like the deadline was friday and like um the rumor and um, the news is that the new manager should be appointed um uh late august i believe once um club football gets up and running again but um you know as we know, like anything can change, you know, you never know who's hiding in the mix, getting ready with our team. But, you know, if Ke like Kevin is one of the strong ones in the mix and, you know, if he just gets his mindset right, like start, if he gets the job and just starts on the right foot, like God knows what kind of um new thing we're starting because, you know, we've seen like the last few years, the Horn era and like an absolute, obviously he didn't get us over the line but you know absolute legend and like how i see it to the board you have a great chance now to create some a new great era of male football and add to the momentum that it already has and like you want to start off on a good foot and like you know kevin he knows his stuff and like um 
I think he would work great with the lads. But, um, you know, as I said, anything can happen when it comes to GA. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I suppose, Patrick, obviously a, a man who's been heavily involved with Donegal GA over the last couple of seasons has been Stephen Rochford, obviously being part of the the backroom team there. He was obviously Mayo senior football manager for a long period of time as well. Okay, you know, took Mayo very, very close to the All-Ireland about 16 and 17. And, you know, it's looking like he's going to be part of the of the backroom team for, for Kevin McStay, which is, which is interesting to say the least, like Donny Buckley, Lee McHale are potential candidates as well. Now, it has all been leaked, so we don't know which is true and which isn't, but what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> but Donny Buckley seems to be linked with every single coaching pick that they ever get on. Like, <laughs> he's a great coach. Like, he seems to be, he'll be, he'll be linked with Donny Gall next week, just you wait and see. But um, <laughs> he's, um, look, I, I think, no, Kevin McStay, you know, he, I was listening to like a podcast interview and he was very, very hurt about missing out in 2014, the chance to manage Mayo. But um, look, he, he's done his bit with Ross Common. You know, he's won a few Connacks with him. And um, I, he said he was finished with under county management. But, you know, I think he's been given an opportunity that's, that's far too good to turn out down. Like, and he's he's worked in the Mayo under 21, he's done it at club management and all the rest. And he's a Mayo legend. He has it all on his sleeve and all the rest. So I think. That man, I think, and there's also been like you know, there's also Mike Sloan, Frank Shaw, and Ray Dempsey. I think they're the free candidates. That, that's what I'm reading in the Mayo News. Are the four ones are so it's going to come from the inside, um, whether Mayo fans like it or not, it seems. But I would have to go and um, yeah, I think you know Kevin McStay. He's experienced. He's a safe bare hands. He's capable of winning a conic off them, which is obviously going to be a much bigger challenge now because they're going to be coming up against all Ireland finalists and naturally one of the favourites for the all Ireland next year. So I think, you know, he's capable of wanting a Connick, which is a good step for Mayo um, and all that there. But I don't think any of them are capable of wanting an all Ireland. But I don't think you could have a, bat, a team of, you know, Jim McGinnis, even Fitzmaurice and Jim Gavin, and they still wouldn't want an all Ireland with Mayo. <laughs> sure, Johnny. The goal aren't going to win one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bit offended here. Just saying. I have to defend my county. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. I think Dublin will be uh will be winning one sooner than both is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, like look, it is an interesting appointment. I mean, obviously, Chloe, like you seen Kevin McStay when he was in in charge of Ross Common, win win two Connacht titles there, and it's an interesting one because personally, like obviously, I'm a Dublin fan, so it doesn't really matter who my preferred choice was. But I've watched a bit of Mayo club football over the last couple of seasons, and I think Ray Dempsey's done a, a great job with Knock More. I think he would have been a good shout, but. I didn't really think Kevin McStay would even be in the, the running, to be perfectly honest, just because of the fact that, you know, like he was, as Patrick was saying there, like when you listen to him on previous podcasts and when he speaks on RTV and everything else, he kind of does say like how hurt he was, the fact that he didn't get that job after when, when James Horan left the the first time. And it's kind of ironic because he was it was Stephen Rochford who got the job ahead of him. But yeah, Stephen Rochford could be, could yeah. be coming in as his number two. So it's sort of... It's, it's a strange dynamic, really, and it'd be interesting as well for the players. I mean, having seen Rashford as manager, potentially him coming in now as a, as a number two. But, like, as both of you said, like, I do think Kevin McStay will be a, a great manager for, for Mayo, given, you know, what he's achieved as, as a player and also as manager of Roscommon as well. A uh, big time, you know, like, I, I, the stats speak for itself, you know. He's an absolute legend both on and off the field as I said like he knows his stuff and like um you know like it's all about being of a, a county manager like of all jobs male like we you know the chip on the shoulder that comes with it like you know I've lost count now 70 something like years and like <laughs> uh, <laughs> and like you know you want to start off we we'll start off on a good foot like we had an absolutely awful year this year you know like the awful defeat to carry Galway like you know you want to start January fresh um when I heard that raid was in the mix um it was kind of mixed feelings you know like uh, you want to bring in someone that has been has either played inter-county like or has 
like gotten to say an All Ireland final, like you know, what do we want to win an All Ireland final? I have an idea. Bring in someone that has won a bloody All Ireland. You know, it's so simple. But um, you know, as I said, like the board just ha- the board just need to think and just get this decision right because you know, it, like it's different. Say for say Donegal, like you know, we're not you're not Mayo. Like, um, you know, we want to end this 70 odd year wait. We want to get back to winning ways. And like, um, you know, they just all we want as male fans is just make this decision right. And um, as I said, like end of August, when the club gets up and running again, that's when and the appointment is supposed to be made. But, um, you know, even whoever gets this, you know, has a lot of weight on their shoulders. Like, you know, we want to, we haven't been playing over the past couple of years, the male that we know and love. And, um, you know, it's, as a fan who cares so much about this team, you want everything to be well. Because, you know, we know ourselves, um, it, either even in, say, soccer, like we know when players don't want to play for a manager, we know the consequences that brings. And, you know, I think, like, if Kevin, Kevin has to just kind of keep going with this confidence, because out of the four um, candidates, candidates that has been leaked I think he's one of the strongest and it'll take a lot to try and beat his background team his experience and um it'll be interesting to see because you know once this um you know once the job became available like um there were so many options and like obviously like it's got only gotten down to four and like you know I would have loved to see say Eamon Fitzmaurice even in the mix um, you know, it's one that, you know, like you want to, as I said before, you want to create like this, a new, go start off a good new era in male football. Like the Horn era is over. Like, you know, as wonderful as it was, it's time to get the momentum back to male football. And, you know, whenever, whoever gets this job has a massive chip on their shoulder. But, you know, we want to get back to winning ways. That's the main thing and whoever gets it i wish them the best of luck yeah yeah i don't to, <laughs> to be honest but uh for sure look i know all seriousness now i think i think kevin mcstay will will most likely do a a very good job i think we're i think with mayo like i know a lot of outside candidates have have been leaked but i'm not exactly sure if they've ever been in the running like fitzmaurice or McGuinness, Jim Gavin, who's even been mentioned as well. Like I, I just don't think any of them have ever really been in the, the running to be honest. But um, I do think Kevin McStay will be a, a good option there. I think for, for Mayo. Well, look, listen, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I suppose uh, Patrick, first of all, if anyone's looking to, I suppose find any of your work or your podcast or at, where where can they find it? GA's own media um, on Instagram, obviously the podcast there. I do all live episodes on Facebook and then they're later uploaded on Spotify. So check out the GA's own podcast, gazone.com is the website there. And there's a few other um, things going on, uh, zone underscore GA on Twitter. So that's it there. So just, yeah, yeah, different articles, podcasts, and other things, just different general social media content. And obviously, you know, with RS. So, yeah, it's, um, that's all what's happening there. And then, yeah, so split the episodes there but uh, there'll be hopefully more in the future so perfect perfect and uh for yourself chloe if anyone's looking for obviously you have your own blog on on mayo ga and i've seen you're on the radio i think as well in in mayo so um yeah if anyone's looking for your work where can they find you um uh the website is uh chloe lynch journalist.ie and twitter the girl that writes one and uh instagram chloe underscore lynch Perfect. Well, look, I know there's plenty of, of Mayo fans that do follow this channel anyway, because I do see them sometimes giving me abuse and in, in the comments down below. So we'll, we'll we'll send them over to you anyway. And um, yeah, to the boat is cheers for coming on. And yeah, Thanks if, for having if, us. If people, perfect. Yeah. And if people can hit the like button, subscribe, be much appreciated. So uh, yeah, cheers to the boat is for coming on.